section of the bracket. Let's pull it up here real quick and show who is already in the lead. The Screaming Demons and Pulse, they have already advanced to the winner's round two because they had the best overall record throughout the day. But right now, we are going to get our first winner's round one matchup. We have Aspire going up against St. Edwards. St. Edwards, I believe, finished at 3-0. Aspire still at 2-1. But they are squaring up on the skid row, which for me, this is the first time being able to see this one. What are your predictions on this one, Susano? I think it's going to get real mixy here, especially with this P1 as both teams are going to be hopping in. Already, you see, the guns are moving. The, the, the flow is low and and already you see a good movement here from the side of aspire they hold out true for just the beginning but it's gonna be eons vanity and uh, his teammate thresh that are gonna immediately circumvent the pressure look at the rotation already number eight ice cubes big you know big tips to him because that was actually insane he just said you know what screw it we go for this next we want to win this one and he's holding out strong yeah, he was waiting there literally the beginning of the game. He's like, I'm not going to move out of this top P2. But unfortunately, there are no teammates around him. And he realizes they are pushing him and he will not be able to hold on. So already at the P2, this is a great break coming on in from the side of St. Edwards. But now it's going to come down to another 1v1. Junior tries to hop up top. He will unfortunately get eliminated. And number seven, though, Melt comes into the back tunnel almost gets three but allows his teammates to be able to push in through the front that has dot screeching in through the top side window aspire they get the immediate rebreak yeah great break right there and uh, i'm glad that aspire were able to bounce back even though they were not able to really assist ice cubes there with his early rotation but they're already on it you see on the side of say edwards they saw the mistake they made last time they do not want to repeat it again but the alleyway claiming more than batman's parents now as two dude go down as well thresh cleans up with the two of his own and already we are in a jambalaya as all players are across the map we're going back towards that back alley right now for this next hill but they're just trying to circumvent push a little more have some outer presence on the side of saint edwards and they're doing just that but with that as i say that they immediately compress lose two here gets in but eons able to assist yeah, Junior went big right there, finding that two-piece. Just allowed his teammates to at least get pushed up. Unfortunately, it's all for not as he will fall. And this will be an opening P3 stand for the side of St. Edwards' is vanity. He tries to take up one player, and his teammates will clean up the rest. Dot sliding on in as he pulls out the rival nine, and that is his bread and butter. He's been playing the flex as of late for Aspire, but he's typically a submachine gun role. But Thresh, we didn't really get to see any of St. Edwards as of yesterday for that pool play, and already they're showing up here. Yeah, I heard they had some real good chemistry within that first day of pool play that they showed that their teamwork is a cut above the rest. And right now, we're kind of seeing early, you know, seedlings of that just within this first little show off. But Don, I mean, goodness gracious, you want to put that man down and put the nail in the coffin as well. But Eons, I mean, the guy's cracked. He's making some moves. But at the end of the day, you've only got 30 bullets on that rival nine. And it is not a sparing game to give up so many bullets, as you see right here with Meltz tries to go for the shots across the playground. Not going to connect all the way. So, say Edwards had the initial hold, but Aspire trying to circumvent and push around, maybe you know, strangulate the hill a bit. Yeah, and they were trying to push out that backside spots, and they do hold it, unfortunately. It's been a great stand from the side of St. Edwards. It's fresh, the lone player left in the hill, as it will be a reinforcement coming in from Vanity. But now he's left alone. Can he hold it off for the next 30 seconds? He grabs one. Can he find another? Oh, he absolutely can, as he's on three in a row. And what a stand from the St. Edwards boys is they're gonna take the lead, extend it roughly to about 35, 40. But Ice Cubes, we saw him do it in the initial heat. He is an absolute super, superstar when he ter tears it up. Yeah, he is definitely showing some early makings here within this first matchup. Vanity, trying to play a uh, spoiler here, playing a little bit of that interference play, but it's gonna be Ice Cubes at his comfort spot here towards the top 10. Grabs immediate kill to uh, in his pocket, but Paul's gonna respond back, trying to take him out. And you look at this hill, it's always a rough one because teams that are much more forward playing will have the better hand here. And it looks as though that 
say Edwards just are not able to really get their motion, their flow into this mix of the song, but it's going to be once again Melt here towards P1. He's facilitating for this next rotation. He wants this spot for his squad, and he's moving in and out, interweaving like sewing. Oh my Jeez. goodness, Melt. That was simply just him making a play for the last 30 seconds. And they are going to be able to lock down simply an easy 60. They're, they're, nobody got past the 50 yard line. He did a great job for that final set towards this P1. His teammates get pushed up. And that's exactly what you want to see out of your submachine gun. He knew he was the Lone Ranger. He did it. He held him off as long as he could. And now after that first set, it is just a 20-point game. But it is neck and neck. Dot Jr. combining for three. They're about to get the fourth. And there he will fall as that's three in a row for the side of Dot himself. But look at Bala trying to go big again. Melt somehow finds a second. This man is a walking two-piece. Yeah, and that's going to be a, a quite literal late throw, uh, four piece down. So Spire have the positioning, they have the movement, but Bala does fly in. Vanity tries to go for the assist here, will take down his teammate, unfortunately. So Scrap Time looking to go into the hands of St. Edwards, but there's one interloper here. It's Junior usurping the position, but with only 18 seconds left, you look at number seven, you look at number eight, that's going to be Melton Ice Cube, who are already forward aware. We saw last time around within that first rotation that they wanted that second P hill, and they're going to do just that. Even Melt's throwing out his cruise missile, but no ice, no dice, still good information given as they start the second. Yeah, what they did differently here is the entire team rotated this time around. Instead of le leaving ice cubes on an island, having to deal essentially with the whole squad of St. Edwards. His threats are starting to push in through P5. Vanity finds the opening, so this allows them to push up. It's everybody starting to flood on in, and I love this. They're taking their time. They're picking off the reinforcements. Then they all strike at once. They converge onto the point. The break comes in at 40 seconds. And when this game first came out, Especially for a hard point. The P2 was almost unbreakable, but teams have learned to adapt and find their openings, and you just have to be as quick as possible if you want to find that break. Yeah, the break is going to be essential here, and I mean, they've, they've shown just that, like you said. So, right now, Aspire, look at them, already hanging towards this alleyway hill, towards this next on P3, but you look at all the St. Edwards players, boy, they are out of dodge. They need to get themselves back in pace here, because with just the scrap, they have been circumventing their points a bit above Aspire, but they're not getting the initials. They're not getting the majorities. They need to do that to try to catapult themselves to that victory, but looks as though they immediately just pinch the pressure, stop immediate Aspire players to, to get killed, and then they got into the... And yeah, this is a good setup as well as finally through the back alley, Aspire go, but... They en ended up getting broken too easily on that P2, and they lost essentially all of that time. And so they put themselves in a hole here late in the game, but not too far away as Dot comes on in, finds two, not able to get any more. And who is the last one standing? It's Mr. Bala himself as he finds four in a row, sitting at even numbers. But the stat line I love to point out from St. Edwards, look at the time spread across the team. That is exactly what you want to see. But from the side of his fire, it looks like Don has been the only person getting in the hill. Yeah, it just shows that each one of these players are interweaving within their setups. They're not allowing one player to stay in one area for too long. They're working together on it. And Vanity, he's going to be that last player for them. They have the initial setup, but Aspire were able to just find the, the breaks in the armor and just immediately shatter it. So now they're trying to play, spoiler here, trying to get back into this hill. Vanity does do good with the hill break, but it's going to be Melts who spawns back up in time. Look at the spawns. We're all over the place. So now it's just coming down to the slays and Bala with the two right there is going to make it happen. But like I said, the spawns are everywhere. So we're having players spawning in and out of these hills like crazy. And right now, St. Edwards, they have found the break once again. Inspired. They just cannot seem to hold a hill for a significant chunk of time. St. Edwards, they have been exposing the openings in their armor. Now only seven seconds away. Vanity, ball up. They get three. And that should be the nail in the coffin. One final play. Melt's not able to do it. St. Edwards, they take a very astounding map. One at 250 to 190 as they ran away with that second half of rotations. You look at it from the beginning, the chemistry, the equation that we're presented with in terms of this game, there were a lot of things to kind of look for 
Aspire were really good on their early rotations, but their holds were not exactly all there. And that just really did them dirty in the long run because St. Awards were able to just utilize those scrap times that they were giving up. Because remember, in this game, people are rotating at 30. And in the eyes of St. Edwards, they're seeing that as a great opportunity. Where did DJ Khaled? And they want to get into that one, hold down the site, get that 30, work towards the next one, break that one a little bit earlier like we saw with that Alley Hill. And it ultimately gained them the success over a long term. It absolutely did, and Aspire, what they kind of struggled with yesterday was holding on to these hills. They, Their bread and butter clearly is the respawns, but it just, again, it just feels like they're losing these these moments, these gunfights. They kind of get squeezed like an anaconda. Shout out to Nacho Libre, but it was a very difficult map one for them because they had the lead for so long and then just kind of fell apart right at the end but now going in to a map like terminal search and destroy again this kind of just feels like another one of those headbutts but so far it's been saint edward showing their horns yeah i mean quite literally they they have a really good long-term game which i think that's something to kind of note is that they don't get scared in the moment because at times where they were looking a little bit dicey with their setups where they were kind of wanting to be they immediately had the big picture the vision in mind and they got that one done so big ups to them for a, a great 60 point uh differential 250 to 190 so aspire they're looking at this one as an opportunity to really slow down their game really be able to utilize their fast movement their prone to intuition and kind of get something done here but it's up to st edwards if they want to play that spoiler and the last time that we saw aspire on terminal ice cubes ended up getting two aces as they won it in a 6-3 fashion against rally x miss so ice cubes he is your true game changer for the side of the spires dot he pulls out the ar putting away the rival nine as he hides behind the escalator in the flower beds but thresh ready and waiting as he is just slowly picking his head off one by one ice cubes oh not able to do it this time st edward they break right on him but junior on the quick side flank and don just doubles up vanity in the rest so now it's a 2v1 now a 1v1 don versus eons again <gasps> this is a big saturday and cod timing at its finest eons crosses the hall right there just as dot goes for a vertical position but now it's going to be playing a little close to the chest here as they're now lined up parallel here. And it's going to be Don who finds the opener onto David. But oh my goodness. That, that is literally a, a quite literal movement gap right there. Because you saw right here, Don was about to get jump shotted. Then immediately David goes for the jump. And Don follows up with that jump as well. Doesn't allow himself to lose that camera angle. And so that's going to be the first round for Aspire. Yeah, big one. Caught a little dicey right at the end there. You thought for a moment that St. Edwards were just going to retake that plane, get the bomb down, and run away with that round. But either way, it was really Junior that just came in and found that player initially. It forced the eyes to turn. Don gets two on the opposite side, and they're able to clean up the final kill. Now they're trying their hand over towards B. And Thresh, he finds the opening as there's three players stacked up from Edwards on this point. Nobody able to cross safely. Everybody goes down. Dot will get one. Everybody, they go into the LOS of St. Edwards. And I'm sorry, you're not going to win that one about nine times out of ten. When you look at the positioning where each of the St. Edwards players were, the position was just that much superior. Plants is just a way better angle to hold than trying to interlope through burger or maybe through the the pillar it's just too many openings so kind of there to note as you know now we're heading into round three maybe don't take an exchange battle when it comes to that esky zip position maybe work a little bit slower into the plane like we saw with that round one that worked for aspire and when you're trying to take over the flower plants i see what saint edwards did there's when you smoke that out the player from top ac is able to watch anybody who gets pushed up in that submachine guns position so you can anybody on the cross and that's really what made the difference but ice cube gets taken out again and i think Fala unfortunately looked left but melts oh my god he finds a double once again this guy has been going massive for the side of Aspire, and he has no fear in his eyes, uh, even to his own Semtex, but he will stay alive for now. 
And that's really big on Thresh. Look at the position adva advantage he's doing right there. Gets the info on Melt. Even finds him lost in the sauce. But Thresh, big shout outs to him. I mean, he literally interweaved out, saw the positioning where they were in top plane, got out of there, went down to the bottom, used the verticality to his advantage, and even slides out because he knows that they're going to get aggressive to his knowledge. So very big on Thresh to really react and proactively make those plays aggressive to a fault i guess you could say for aspire melts he is confident with his gunning right now so he's he's realistically taking these these fights he should not be in so got a little impatient wanted to go out and just start challenging every single player on saint edwards but you cannot do you cannot do that with a team of this caliber especially on a saturday where only the top three teams make it into championship sunday that's something you got to take into account yeah, and you look at it right here, every player is just making their way over, but Thresh has the view, he has the spot. So Ball is going to assist him with the AR work, they immediately grab three, Don's the last one, and you look at the, the kill streaks right now, and that's going to grant them the cruise right there as Thresh does finish out the round. So now, they have three rounds in a row, and a cruise missile in their back pocket, but... Look at the advantage that they use with their verticality. They have players on the bottom waiting for that reaction for them to jump out of plane. They have players watching each angle. I mean, this is literally a lockdown. Somebody on that team heard about the GIGN plane or extraction, and they did it to the T. <laughs> they absolutely did, and Thresh is on six in a row. And I, I love that they're taking what Aspire is giving them. They're taking parts of the map where they're leaving it open. There's gaps in the armor, like we've said before, in their hard point. And now they need to start to clean things up. Maybe have somebody be a little bit more patient, hold the corner. But again, no trade came through, and Daunt was right there. He might have gotten back down. Now he's getting pushed. He gets taken down. It just feels like St. Edwards, they know how they play terminal, and they are reading what the side of Aspire is giving them. Oh, they're, they're reading all the dead zones. They're reading the reaction that's coming out of Aspire. I mean, you saw right there, a player was hanging out towards Eski. Eons gets the kill. Sees the player, relays that to his teammates. Bala pushes in, grabs that kill. So now, Thresh with the 7, looking real good here, trying to work the AR from the top of AC. But it's going to be his teammates who assist him. They grab the kill. And now, that's four rounds in a row for St. Edwards. And like you said, they're just looking real comfortable on this map. It's, I mean, they're finding all the first bloods, too. It's been five rounds, five first bloods, and that is truly a detriment to show how they, how patient they are and the angles that they keep changing up. Nothing has been the same. And so where they say it's don't, if it's not broken, don't fix it, but they have been maneuvering around this map so effortlessly. It, it just, it, Aspire cannot get a read on them right now. They cannot. I mean, they think that they're curating a sort of play, but really they're just playing into the hands of St. Edwards, as you already see right here. The stun goes through. That gives a positive confirmation. Bala, he's looking to maybe push up here, and you already have Vanity with two trying to get the assist. Eons comes in with the third. The fourth one, Junior, currently out towards Burger, gets taken out early like some expired food. And St. Edwards, and now fifth round in a row. Oh my goodness, they're giving them the goat cheese, that is for sure, because Aspire, they are smelling something funky, and they cannot get a kill at the moment, as it is just, this is a clinical, clinical terminal search and destroy. I mean, there's really nothing that Aspire can do at the moment. They just keep getting too aggressive. You have Ice Cubes, who has been their superstar in this mode, looking like he's about to turn into the new 007. You just cannot have something like that happen. And this is a long haul and a way to get back. But Aspire, you just need to play it safe. And it, it just kind of feels like they're not getting trades and they need to start doing that. Better. Yeah, and you see right here, they're going to go for the exchange battle like we saw that first time around. Eons with two. Already looking real good. Bala will get traded out. But Vanity, one HP in a dream, has some assistance with his teammates watching over him. And you see right here, this Eski's position has been compromised. Vanity takes some shots, gets the info, but it looks as though Thresh is getting aggressive. He wants that 10-piece streak, but he's already at the 9. At this point, he could just throw the screws, but they're going to play this one smart, methodical. And St. Edwards, six rounds in a row, will take this victory. Six rounds in a row, but they got all seven first bloods, and that is just it's demoralizing right there. And 
again, we talk about this, is having that mental fortitude to just go into the next map and say, hey, we gotta just brush this one off. You can't be thinking. As Don ended up getting 1,600 damage, and I don't think there was another player who even broke over 500, and yeah, a, a tough, tough map for them. And I think for the side of St. Edwards, they did their homework because there was a lot of uh, VOD on the side of Aspire playing Search and Destroy, playing on Terminal, and they knew exactly where their setups was. And I think you could tell the side of St. Edwards did their homework. Oh, they did. I mean, they were interweaving plays, making it look like nothing. I mean, they were, you know, LeBron and Dwayne Wade making assists out here, interweaving, working each other's chemistry like that. I mean, it was beautiful. But, I mean, it, 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 is, some, it is quite literally a masterclass. That's what it was. It, it absolutely is. And heading on into a map three, Karachi Control. You know, I kind of like this one for Aspire, but just how good St. Edwards is playing, it's going to be kind of difficult to say if anybody's gonna be able to change that around. And I love this, being on Fiverr, you are just hopping right into match to match to match. There are very minimal breaks coming on in as this is winner's round one, so don't worry. It's a double elimination bracket. If you lose here, you still got a chance to make that incredible run, just like the Black Ops or uh, 100 Thieves. Yeah, I mean, there's plenty of opportunity within the loser's bracket, but Aspire, they don't want to go out just yet. I mean, they're, they're going to try and fight for this one. And with the opener coming in from Melts as we hop into this Karachi control, and Bala will be unfortunately next on the list for Melts. And Don picks up the third, and so the last one's going to be Vanity as he unfortunately gets sent back to the spawn as well. The plan for A, scrapped. Heading into B now, trying to crash force this one, but it looks as though they do have some mid-presence with Eons, and... He is getting some help with his teammate Vanity. So they immediately go for the stack here on B. And Junior is caught way out of his comfort zone as Melts does try to assist with his presence. But it looks as though that B will get too stacked and the time will be stopped. Yeah, and right now I think it's fired. They're kind of just chalking up their losses. See if Don could maybe find an opening. Not able to do so. A minute extension will be added. Just for a moment, get all four players on the board. Junior taking everybody down before he is dropped. And what the side of Edwards have done is they're really trying to get into the spawn of Aspire. Always have one player there. Now look at number three. He's playing this incredibly slow. He knows that it's going to come down to him finding one or two opening picks and giving his teammates that information of what he can find on the map. And his teammates are doing it. As they find three, Don will only get one. And so now Vanity, he's going to strike. He's going to put the pressure right back onto his fire. And he's going to at least find maybe three, but Don, oh, the last second spawn and catches Vanity. And that might have just saved Aspire. It did. It most definitely did. It stopped them from losing the stem on their tree here. So now they're going to try and make their way here. You do see Bala, unfortunately. Right shoulder creeps out a little bit too much. Although, nice stun. That stops the play immediately. He's able to regen, breathe. He's got some assistance here from his teammate. But looks like the vanity is going to go down as Dot peeks out, grabs the two, slams them back into their spawn. But if you look at it right now, they're all just moving through into that B, trying to maybe play around that spawn maybe a little bit there but it just doesn't look like they have the opportunity just yet no openings have been made and they're trying to push two in the back but don again dealing with the front along with junior melts finds eons that's the player down and make it all for the submachine guns for aspire have been popping off eight and three for Don, six and four for melts as he continues to find those doubles throughout this series and it's just a matter of you keep that up and finally ice cubes gets on the board with his own double headshot and another four man down so this is a great bounce back we're seeing signs of life from aspire yeah big time the the cardiac uh, uh meter is definitely beeping right now we're seeing some good signs of life indeed i mean that was really good that they didn't allow any cracks in their armor i feel like each one of them was set up this time around that we saw a lot of trades come through. I mean, they saw what they did wrong with that terminal. There were no trades coming through. So this time around, they said, okay, we realize. Let's get this one going. And that, I guess that's why they didn't want to go to a break either. Because they knew exactly what they did wrong. And they're trying to put that pressure in. Absolutely. And Don also has a streak in his back pocket. So we'll have to keep mind of that as this game continues. 
But so far, Edwards, it looks like they're going to put a little bit of a 2 2 split. Number three, this opening, how massive that would be. No vanity is taken down. And already, the pressure is being felt as Edwards, they are getting back down. Dot finds another. And now they're just going to come sit to this triple stack. As, oh, here comes the deep flank from Bala. Can he get one more? No, he will not. As I believe they only have one player, and that's Ice Cubes. Can he get the second ticket? Did he end up getting that one, Susano? I can't see an... Oh, I don't think he did. Think he so. was just a sliver away. But Junior will be able to probably get into the strike here. But Bala immediately responds. Very good out of him to play forward like this. But it's going to be Dante and Meltz there that are moving through. And, I mean, they literally just need, like, a sliver of that second one. So it looks as though they're, they're going to try their best with it. But Eon's thresh, they're... Working the AR here, and they're trying to slow it down. They stop the play immediately. So now, A, once again, not going to be contested by the enemy. So, Eons and Co., they have to immediately try and link themselves back towards that B. And Eons now, he sits at five in a row. He was the player that stopped that initial A side push, but now the transition over to the B side street is Meltz tries to get up front and set her B the tip of the spear. As he finds one, finds two again. It just seems like he finds these doubles when he shouldn't. And that should be the B site cap. Unless if Bala has anything to say about it, he finds one. But guess who is on the prowl again? It is Melt. On the kill, though, is the question. And oh, no. What did Bala just do to him? He put him on absolute notice as he evicts him right out of the bank. Yeah, he, he put him on some skates there. I saw him, but that was a bit of a rough one. As Vanity does respond with the two of his own, 27 seconds, but both A and B ever so close to getting captured. So this is literally do or die time if you are St. Edwards. You do not want to go down 0-2 to a team that you put down 6-1 in SD. So they're going to respond back with as much as they can with the AR work. Junior gets caught out by Bala, and Meltz is the only one here to try and assist from the top down. And Bala still putting on a master class, but it's going to be Vanity who gets shot down. And B has been able to stop the timer. Eight seconds left. You do not want another minute to try and grab that last pick on A. Oh, and they barely get it, but it's coming down to lives. And look how far number four is pushed up. Thresh, you don't need to do a whole lot. You just need to stay alive. They are trying to hunt you down. As long as you're making them search and delaying the clock, your teammates are going to watch over you. They're going to find those kills, and that's exactly what Thresh is doing. And he is in an incredible spot. Dont is going to get picked off, so it's just going to come down to lives. But either way, I think Aspire has the advantage with that one extra. Tick. I'm not 100% positive. Thresh is on six in a row, so he earns that glide bomb. So it is going to absolutely remedy what the side of Spire did in their first defensive round. Coming back, even though it was a little bit of a bumpy start, they were able to land the plane safely. Yeah, it looks as though that they're just moving through right now. And Aspire did get more kicks, I believe, with this one. But oh, oh no. no, not the assassination. Oh, my goodness. We're going to see that on Twitter later. That's for sure. That's oh, for sure. Just the absolute disrespect there, Susanna. Yeah. We get to sleep, see it in slow motion as well as the player gets his heart stabbed out. Oh. And I mean, that's kind of what it feels like with St. Edwards in those first two maps but i think right there if that's gonna irk anybody it's gonna be all the players from aspire because i mean it was relatively close and it, it still is in this yeah, control so much. maybe you just lit a fire under the players of aspire i mean goodness gracious that is just a dagger through the heart quite literally so we'll see what they can do here in this instance but i believe this time around they're not even gonna try to go for a it's gonna be a fast pivot towards b players are able to hop on for now junior i mean hp tries to go for the renetti kill did not work and it looks as though only one man left and exactly get out of dodge and play smart hold the angles it's going to be vanity here for the top he does get some openers onto melts but gets out into convenience with his life teammates are able to respond they're here now all the information has been given wall banks in of course vanity giving up his position grabs the kill and it looks as though b might be done and dusted 
Yeah, Melt is trying to find any niche, but unfortunately everything is sealed off site. Vanity has the coverage. He will find the kill. He gets the read on a daunt. Fortunately, does not have the gunning to back it on up, but either way, it doesn't matter. You secure B, you extend it. You basically have two minutes on the clock. You're up in live, so this is a good start here for the Edwards boys as they're going to start to transition, but I think the side of Junior and Co. are starting to get the reads of how Edwards are playing this control. They're constantly in this, it seems like, 2-2 split. Two players try to push out the back, two try to push in at least through the middle, but they're fresh and best the glide bomb. But unfortunately, you will lose a player, and now there's only going to be one remaining member, but Melts, he does just enough. That's going to be big. He will eventually fall, and that allows Bala to get in to that A point and stop it for now. And look at that threshing presence that's pushed all these players out towards <laughs> towards the gas station and a bit of Scooby-Doo door play here. They will be able to kind of have a bit of a problem, but Vanity does get naded out, but still, first hit confirmed. Now all players from the fire are going to be hopping through, and they throw numbers at it, and thankfully it gets them the opener. So now only one tick guaranteed. They reset. St. Edwards, I mean, that was really good. They had Vanity and Thresh towards the back lane. They just need to reiterate and redo that. Bala, he is pushed up, and oh, no! What no. did he just do to Dot again? Oh. Uh, Dot got thrown around in a circle, and he got body slammed hard onto the pavement as Melz again. What is he doing? He just somehow gets these doubles, even though his stat line isn't showing that it is the best. He has an incredible ton of engagements, but so does Eon on the other sides, and guess who? It is Ice Cubes. He has finally showed up to this. 17 and 8, four in a row. He's trying to get a glide bomb himself, make it five, and all he's doing is giving all the information to his teams. They have a crossfire set up beautifully, and number four, he's really going to be the only one who can even remotely make a play, and he does, so that could be the opening. Yeah, that could be the opener that they were praying for here, but they're actually going to get caught out, unfortunately, and it's just crossfire after crossfire with these Aspire players. I mean, you have one towards mid, one hanging out towards the side. Vanity just absolutely cameras Junior, but Bala will be able to get the car explosion, and now it's just Bala's chance. He's just got to get to the site and stop the time, but he does get taken down, so immediately that will be the round for Aspire as Vortex goes to the side of St. Edwards. I think there's maybe one more round remaining glide bomb on Edwards and then on the side of his fire you have two one from Dot one from Ice Cube so are they gonna try to invest both at the same time and maybe try to just end this map here and now extend it to a terminal hard point where honestly that will be another I think good matchup for them but still you have to close it out here get everybody calm down and say hey let's get this let's run the clinic on them and show show the side of St. Edwards how you do it in control. Yeah, it's time to put on that master class. So here we go now. Dom's going to get caught out here. George Concierge will be trying to fight for his life and gets the kill ASAP right there with the Renetti, unfortunately, for them. And it looks as though they have full control of this A with two players in stacking the side. And Eons is here towards mid. It might have to be a chalk moment, but know that they are going to have more kills for the side of Aspire as they send all of these St. Edwards players back to their spawns and there you go for the first time within this map we have an A successful hit right off rip so B is going to be on red alert and you have to have an incredibly good spread across the map and start winning every single gunfight you cannot give up in map control and allow somebody like Dot to prowl and pounce on every single player but Bala gets the trade so good timing from them and now melts he clears out the bank and Bala stay alive and maybe find one gets out with his life so all you got to do is be annoying ice cubes though he has been incredible this map three four in a row 23 and 9 and honestly he could invest a streak right now and re-earn one so i wonder if that's potentially an option i still is still there sitting on five they're done another so this just could be the opening if they find this kill this one could be over they absolutely do but ice cubes loses the gunfight in the middle of the map which probably would have sealed it edwards you need to fly yeah you need to fly you need to fry right now as they're all trying to get into the site just to try and slow them down but 
kick going ever so presently into the favor of Aspire. They are winning these fights. That's three down now, looking for the fourth. And it looks like that it's going to be Ice Cubes who grabs two. Insanely done. Although the first tick did not get acquired, they still have that opportunity. As you see immediately, Junior with the two of his own. St. Edwards, they lose their positioning, and now it looks like they're going to lose the game. Oh my goodness, Junior, go off, young man. Like I believe it was, I think it was you who was saying make him pop a proud or pop a proud, and it was absolutely incredible. But great stuff from the side of Aspire. They finally have regained, and now we're going to be heading to a map four. And I mean, what it would be to see a reverse three to start off. The, the bracket play for Saturday, absolutely incredible. And actually, I believe it was Big Ritz saying, making Poppy proud. So, shout out to him. But great stuff from Aspire right there. Yeah, beautiful stuff indeed. And it looks as though they we're going to be heading into Terminal for our fourth map of Hardpoint. But it looks as though that we're probably going to be taking a short break, ladies and gentlemen. So, don't go anywhere. We'll be back in just a second with Terminal Hardpoint. Going down, Hype with a beautiful drop shot, and it's a 2v4. Omit in trouble, Shake. Yeah, they're in trouble, but mind. <laughs> finds a huge kill onto that bomb planter, but Collision is on it, and he's gonna find another one. Josh, oh. he doesn't find the bomb planter, but he's got the pistol, he's ready. The sun goes through, and Josh, boy. Josh, go off, will you, kid? When hunting, looking for a player here in this people area, he dubs the dodge, a slide around, he'll absolutely find one there on the lurch. Not gonna expect the double child there. Oh my! There exists a band of anonymous players, gamers who obliterate anyone who comes to face them, reaching scores never achieved before or since in every game they play, their win records are flawless. Since their usernames are always left empty, they are simply known to people as the Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back as we are hopping right back into the terminal to see who has the correct or properly booked ticket to make sure they can take themselves in to winner's round one. My name is Grab the Draft, I'm here with OG Susano as we are bringing it right into the map four. But again, this is going to be an interesting one to say the least because I think after that execution, Aspire felt absolutely disrespected and they're going to try to come back here. Ice Cube already on three in a row and this is the scary part when this man gets going it is tough to slow him down as he starts it off four in a row aspire taking just a slight narrow lead but they have the rotation and then eons he tried to slip the net unfortunately does get caught out but what a great start for the side of aspire right now we have suzano rocking as uh the cod caster so right as we have one of our uh production come back he'll be hopping right back on the mic with me but look at vanity a very simple break coming on in from the edwards boys as they break into the jewelry store and vanity ready not the really only one into position unfortunately he will fall down in short order as you're looking across the map you can see number seven he is just holding off any sort of pinch that the side of Edwards is going to try to commit to, but it doesn't matter. Bala wins the gunfight anyways, and now they have to track all the way across into the open plains of the tar mat, as it will be Junior, though, taking a good 1v1, and that could be the open to try to retake this plane. Melts there also gets Bala, so this is a great start. Melts gets a double, only one more player. Fresh will fall, so when you thought the side of Edwards had everything under control, it is immediate retake of that plane aspire they are playing like they want to put this one to a map five but the way that that search and destroy was looking in the map two i'm not sure if i'm feeling 
incredibly confident, but momentum is an absolute killer when it comes to Call of Duty. Not to mention, when you can see the other team across the room and you maybe start to see the fear in their eyes, that confidence starts to just emit through your gameplay. Susano, I mean, what do you think about this map so far? I'm thinking it's a lot of mixed back and forth. You can tell the feelings that are going into this game from Aspire. They are very much wrong. They feel angry and spiteful. And you can tell that in their gameplay. You see immediately Ice Cubes melts, grabbing two good kills at the beginning that really just set the tone for this one. They grab the scrap, looking to maybe push over towards this Burger Town Hill, but nobody has been able to get into it just yet so it's still a war of attrition here as they're just trying to work the front yeah they're trying to and two players they will bob and weave outside of the bullets but eons he goes out takes another challenge ice cube he sits him down and puts him into the cold watery abyss as it will be nobody hopping into the burger town as of yet oh excuse me junior will find an opening and all he needs to do is stay down allow his teammates to do the work but they do not have a trophy and he was about a half second away from laying it down he will fall and so 30 seconds should go to the way of edwards i don't think the fire gonna throw too much more but eons for some reason just stands up and gives away a freebie that is essentially a a 60 point swing that you just cannot give away in a moment like this you really can't you just have to trust your teammates play down just and listen to each other work the way of the hard point the rotations the flow because right there now they're having to work down from the back here of this library hill within the bookstore and i mean goodness gracious you have vanity who's fighting for his life every tactical he's throwing is just getting absolutely hammered by trophy system so it is literally a ballroom blitz and thresh is going to come out victorious for now but immediately melts and co spot up towards the back of vagus claim and now they're able to respond back with close proximity and thresh ended up getting that thri triple but there was one more player and it was melton he is absolutely a demon at the moment allows his teammates to do the work for him and the bait and switches this is absolute textbook from the side of Aspire and St. Edwards. They're both looking great at it, but it's just a matter of who can find the gunny at the right moment. Meltz is starting to turn it up. 16 and 11, five in a row. He's looking for a streak, and I think he just earned it as well. But Aspire, they are truly off to the races and they are, as they are about to almost hold a 75 point lead. Yeah, they're looking really good. St. So Edwards responds back with three of their own. Could be a change in the narrative. Because now we set up the second set of rotations. Looks as though the St. Edwards are going to be the ones to have this vantage position. But Eons, unfortunately, peeks out a little bit too much out of the corner of the pillar. Will lose his life. 97 points and counting upwards. It looks as though that St. Edwards finally breaks out of the point threshold here in the second set. Thresh immediately with the cross cover. It will grab one. Looks to grab the second. Does not want to give up his life, but Junior takes this opportunity to hop into the hill. Does get taken down, though, as the last line of defense is Vanity. Eon spawns up within time to help out his teammate, and it looks as though that the St. Edwards boys have been able to grant themselves a breath of fresh air for this second set. Yeah, and a great start off on that second set of rotations as they essentially get 40 seconds off of that P1, which is relatively hard to do, but their setup, it was clean, it was crisp. They didn't allow too many openings. They were able to capitalize on every single second. And now here, they've also won the rotation. They knew exactly where Spire was spawning. The only one who's even remotely in position is Dont, but he is going to have to go through the entire walkway. But Thresh, can he win this gunfight fight against Junior? And yes, he will absolutely be able to do so. We might see a lead change, but not if Meltz has anything to do about it. As he is trying to regen, you know he wants to go out and challenge. But a little bit of teammate support coming on in from St. Edwards is exactly what the doctor ordered up. And there is the lead change defenses. Yep, St. Edwards finally for the first time within this map are able to put the ball into their court. And looks as though that Aspire, they're just, just fumbling to get onto this site. But it looks as though that for the first time in this rotations, they are not blessed with close proximity in their spawns. Thresh is going to be able to 
just goes down via the sacrificial pawn. It looks as though that all players from St. Edward now have this plane under control. But without them knowing, you see it's going to be Dante who slides in through, does get taken down though. And it looks as though that all Aspire players have just done the same exact strategy to the opposite on St. Edward's. Absolutely in Thresh. He's sitting in a good position, but who has the high ground? It is Aspire at the moment. We'll look at number two or Bala, Eons. They try to find something. Unfortunately, not able to get anything. And I think Thresh knew there was a player above him, but just could not, unfortunately, get the read of where the hop down was coming. So, right now, the plane is full control of the boys in blue. But on the transition, it is looking good for St. Edwards. They are going to rely on this Burger Town Hill. And if you get this, Job well done, but either way, Aspire is going to break that 200 point threshold. No pun intended, as Eons, he will eventually fall, but the players from Aspire slowly but surely working their way. But Edwards, they have the coverage. All you need to do is stay down, do not get picked off from this position because, I mean, it would be difficult to make it or get it done in the P5. Yeah, they need this full 60, quite literally, to just set them up. But as I say that, you lose two, you lose the third. Last one's going to be Thresh. Ice Cube, unfortunately, takes out his teammate. They're hopping through, and Thresh is going to be able to survive on his own. Teammates are going to be able to respond back within the Eskies. This is great. They have the close spawns. They push these players out towards baggage claim, but it looks as though it's the same situation. They're just having to leave Thresh up to his vices to hold it down. And the man is the lone survivor here in the forest, but... It will be Aspire who finally flood them with numbers and hold it down. Thresh literally did everything he could in that moment. I mean, he lost all of his teammates in the blink of an eye twice. But Melts is immediately there. Don, and then he gets a triple. 27 and 18. They cannot win it here, but they have full map control. They're starting to get the rotation. And somehow with one AP, he is still alive. But no, it is short-lived. Eons pulls out the rival nine himself and decides saying, hey, I can get doubles. Look at me, my friend. Ice Cube's sitting in from the top AC, making it extra cruel. Rocking that R410A. Make sure the refrigerant is going through his veins at the moment. But Melts, not able to take down the players in the back. But it is Aspire currently in the hill. So they need to start making a play. A play indeed. And you look at the score set right now. They will not be able to win off of this hill on the side of St. Edwards. But Aspire, they just need nine seconds. And of course, of all the hills for it to be on, it's the Mixie Hill of Book store so they grab the initial here for a second it puts them up to 44 to 204 and if you are St. edwards you just need to contest have one player focus on the rotation as the rest are fighting for this one tooth and nail in hand in hand fist over fist but it looks as though that they are going to go for the rotation here for a second you see number five spawns up late but he will be the one to respond next into this next set Oh, and that was difficult. Eons needed to stay alive right there so he could turn around and stop the players coming in from Asky because this is fully in favor of Aspire. Melt, he kind of challenges out a little preemptively. And so now it's all up to Ice Cube. He has one. Can he find another? Has a little bit of support. Does get the second. But Edwards, they're back in the hill. They have came back from essentially 70 points and they put it within 20. But oh, the wall bang, the nerdiness comes through. Thresh, can he stay alive and he's literally jumping so it doesn't happen but getting it done and they somehow take over this hill and honestly right now if you're aspired you're just trying to take out one player thrust is just jumping he is like bugs buddy out there it doesn't matter ladies and gentlemen we are going to a map five and a potential reverse sweep could be in the cards my goodness i mean i don't want to say anything in terms of cursing but literally after that execution moment this has been a complete pivot i mean you have worn red and the matadors are looking at you confused why have you shown this squad that clearly we're going to be you know done and dusted 3-0 an opportunity of a revival you know it's i believe it was kobe or michael jordan that said i don't like to motivate my enemies and you just clearly motivated your enemies here in this moment. And so now, St. Edwards, the sweat is on your forehead. You need to realize, hey, we got to get this one going. Look, we had that great terminal SD. It was six to one. Now we need to replicate that on the invasion. Just utilize our positioning to our advantage.
Karma is a fickle thing there, Suzano, and they are getting a full taste of it. Immediately when the assassination come through, the COD gods were like, bet, you weren't praying to us anymore, so they give the favor to the side of Aspire. I mean, St. Edwards, they looked great in that map one, 250, 190, and then they looked absolutely dominant when it came to that search and destroy. A 6-1 did not drop a single first blood. Again, it's a very headbutt type map, but they played it to perfection, and then Karachi control, Aspire started to turn it up, 3-1, and then you saw it on the terminal, 250 to 226, and heading into an invasion SND. Aspire has all the momentum. If you are the IGL from St. Edwards, what are you saying to your boys right now? Just regain, refresh, get yourself back into the conversation. Don't allow these last two maps to really define how we've been playing. Then the first two, I mean, granted, you look at that Skid Row hardpoint, they only lost by 60 points Aspire. So it was definitely a showing that, hey, Aspire are willing to play it out when it comes to the hard points. So St. Edwards, I mean, now you have the advantage. You were a much better team when it came to that terminal search and destroy. Can you replicate it here? Are you going to be able to really use the advantages of these lanes and your ARs to their fullest? We're going to have to see now. It's going to be interesting, but what a way it would be to start off, right? Potential reverse sweep. What, could we get around 11? I would love to see it. Doesn't matter which way it goes in my eyes, but as long as the fans, everybody out there who is watching is getting this type of content, I don't think you can be mad about it. But right now, I think if you're a St. Edwards fan, you're, you're kind of like, ooh, I'm feeling a little nervous. But, and guess what? What do Spire do first round? They get a first blood, and that's the first one of two maps of s &T. <laughs> Goodness gracious. And so now we begin with the opener. Unfortunately, Vanny, Vanity is going to be the one to lose his life. His teammates, Eon, Bala, Thresh. They do see Junior, though. They will react to it, but a trap set by Melt as he grabs two. Quite literally just destroying them, melting them down to their core principles. Thresh is going to be here. Grabs one. Will not be able to grab the second. And Aspire with their first round. Looking dangerous. They started this way, this way in the map too, but and they continue it as a question. Oh my goodness, I, I didn't even realize that turn and burn just happened. Ice Cubes again, right next to the AC where he lives and breathes and where he belongs. As Edwards, Thresh, Vanity, Bala, Eons, such a talented squad. You would hate for it to for them to end it like this in the winner's round one doesn't matter you will get a second opportunity if it comes to that but right now you're feeling that it's a spire it's their game to potentially win it's just a matter of can they make it happen and it's thresh gets into an engagement smokes are out the pressure yeah, the pressure is on the game is a foot and so they'll be making their way over towards square here and the rebar going to give a bit of some positioning advantage, but it's going to be Thresh with the opener. Nicely done. Vanity able to grab the second, third one. Not going to be assisted. It's a 2v2 now as two players do go down. Bala and Thresh losing their lives. Eons and Vanity have to respond here. Daunt knows that Vanity is still here within this corner, but I don't think Vanity realizes it either. Oh my goodness, what a snake in the grass. This would oh. be the patient play pays off but look at this angle that eon has and he might actually might be able to get a little bit of a wall bang he at least knows the bomb is going down and now he has at least the information on one player Don, he's gonna give a call out to his teammates and he still has a smoke and a nade to deal with so he's got to think what do i have in my arsenal unfortunately it will not matter and in a moment like that i think that's something you have to realize some of these players when it comes to those late rounds what do you have in your kit I think right there, you maybe try to smoke that one out and maybe try to at least isolate a gunfight into a 1v1. You had an idea where his teammate might be, but either way, Aspire, they come back and now they're 2-0 up. Yeah, they are looking very much dangerous already, setting different paths and trend lines from the last SND. Last time around, they only won one round and then it was a six round just absolute hammering from the side of St. Edwards. And now they're the ones setting the pace. They are setting the motion. And so as we see the motion going over towards B, let's know it's going to be the bomb carrier, Bala, who will be the one to carry it. 
will be making his way, but he is assisted by none other than Vanity and Eons. Daunt and Co, they're playing in these Freddy quarters, having good success as Junior assists the second kill. That's going to be a 2v4 now. Daunt not giving up his life, and Eons gets slammed as well. Last one left is going to be Thresh, and he was watching the 50-yard line, not realizing that a fumble has occurred over here towards this B. Fumble has occurred. It's currently the ball still on the ground unfortunately i don't think it's gonna matter because there was too many players to deal with aspire 3-0 start right here and uh, i think you can kind of tell the difference in the gameplay this edwards they're playing kind of scared they're not playing loose which is what we talk about in a tournament moment like this and Again, you go back. We are going to probably mention it quite a few times here today. You should not be disrespecting the enemy team with an assassination no. when it was, there was still plenty of time left in that game. Yeah, talk as much trash as you want. Shoot bodies as much as you want, but you got to close out those maps. It doesn't matter how much trash talk you want to do. If you're not closing out those maps, it's not going to be a good one for you. But whoa! Bala showing us some new verticality here in positioning. Does get a kill onto Melt. I believe Melt was even surprised, but Dante Co, they are able to respond back in kind. And so now a 3v3, true neutral. Aspire have the opportunity to really just steamroll through with this next round win if they get it. But St. Edwards, they need to just have some vitalization to their play. And Vanity, he could be the player to spot everybody out from Aspire. And they have no idea he's sitting right here. And oh, sure if. I'm not sure if Don ended up seeing him on that top side broken and tosses out a stun and yep they definitely spotted him and he has no idea what was coming he gets shot in the back but luckily number four he rotated over Thresh got that call out unfortunately it was just a tad too late to be able to support right away and the bomb is going down 25 seconds oh, what a day he said hold that my friend but he dropped it ran away and now it's going to be a retake 2v3 retake indeed, and you see right now it's going to be Eons, Thresh. They are working together here. Junior, Daunt, is currently on the 6th streak with that cruise missile in his back pocket. He is looking a lot more comfortable now, especially since they're up 3-0. They, they, they know exactly where the players are. And, oh, can Thresh get one? He knows where the second is, but Daunt starts this one off. 7-0 and oh, currently. Aspire... It's 4-0, and, oh, and right now, this is looking like a collapse from St. Edwards. And, I mean, it is tough to watch right now. It just, nothing can go right for them. Yeah, nothing. There are no plays in the equation. The playbook is empty. It is quite literally, they are just ducks in the water being shot down. And, unfortunately, they are two rounds away from getting reverse swept. We'll just have to see if anybody from Edwards can pull off an incredible play. Get any sort of momentum. Just get a round on the board. Don't worry about the score line. It will come to you once you start finding those kills. And they're trying to clear out all the angles. But, oh, he switches it up. He's behind the counter. Dot, finally, the menace is taken down in the end as he falls at an eight kill streak start. But Eons, now he's going to take his place right behind the cash register. And, ooh, it will be melts. It's out a little bit too wide, so this is what you want to see out of Edwards. They're taking it slow. Ancient plays. It's going to be a 2v3 retake. And these are one of those moments where if you're a Spire, hey, get as much information as you can, and they're going to decide to buddy-buddy up. This is what they've been doing the second half of this. But, oh, my goodness, Ice Cube taking off the top of the car. Eon spots out the other player. This could be a good round for Edwards. Yeah, this could be a great round for them to breathe. And, and there you go. The first round now for the side of St. Edwards. Very nicely done. Now, they have much more to work with. A lot to hike in terms of the score. But Spire, they now know, hey, when it comes to the attack, we just need to be a little bit more present with the lanes. Do not allow... St. Edwards to just get up into the comfortable spots that they want to be in and really just deny them that entry. Yeah, and they have to deny it fully. Here is now, Edwards, you get one round. You just kind of look at each other and say, hey, this pups are out. Let's keep this 
to keep this momentum going in our side. Anything that you can take, you need to grasp it. Whether it is literally the last inch of the rope, you need to hang on for dear life right now. As Junior, oh, he is getting spotted. Dion's though. He's playing this one slow. He's not giving away his position until he knows he can confirm a kill. And I like this. The trigger discipline. But unfortunately, he does get spot out either way. It's a solid position as he's just given all the information to the other team. But it is a full A site takeover. And nobody from the side of St. Edwards right now has even pushed up past basically the 30-yard line. It's going to be a straight 4v4. No! Oh, oh no. no. Thresh, uh, he makes up for it. But now it's a 3v3. Fortunate teammate on Tabala will be crippling them as they enter into the foot race here. As for the lives are going down. And now you will see a big problem as 24 seconds is left. And it's still a 3v3. Now Aspire with the numbers. 2v2. 18 seconds left. You just need to play this one out. But Aspire to decide not to wait for the timer. They take it out through the lives. And so now they are calling match here. 5 to 1 we are potentially witnessing a breakdown right now and it's it's hard hard to hard to see it but edwards what do you have dig deep you need to start winning some of these gunfights start getting back the first bloods and that was the biggest thing in search and destroy terminal they won every single first blood they got seven of them but now they only have two they are on the devil's doorstep Wrapping on the losers round one here in potentially a full breakdown. Yep, the potential breakdown is occurring and with it being a 4v3 right now. Oh, you will see Vanity with a nice nade follow up. Don does respond back with the in kind. It's a 3v1. And now you see it right here. In front of the ice cubes who does lose his life. So St. Edwards extend themselves out here just shortly. And coming on in to the next round. And it's going to be a doozy for sure. Slowly but surely. As still only one away from Aspire. But you have a long way to go. And Thresh though. He is putting the team on his back. But everybody's starting to get good. Get going. Excuse me. As Eons. He had an 0-4 start. Back to 4-5. and five. Bala needs to start being a step Curry. Start hitting those threes from long range shots. As he pushes up towards the middle. And now everybody's back up. Aspire. They're not messing it around anymore. They're just going to say, hey, we're going to punch you in the face. And we'll see if you can take it. Yeah, let's see indeed if they've got it. And there you go. Bala from the mid, from the mid lane will be able to take out one. Equals it up to 4v3. Now, into the round counter they look. Still 2v5. St. Edwards have a lot to work with. They need to get this one down. You see the bomb does get picked up. Bala opening shots gets away. But now, Aspire. Going to hightail it back to A. But look at all those St. Edwards players. They are set up within a nice quad formation. Each one covering in their own lane. Bala holds the mid. Sees ice cubes in the back. Will be able to shoot down, but will not be able to get the third kill here. So, 2v4. They know that they're pivoting over towards A as we see them starting to move into the dead zones. And yeah, this is, I mean, this is the dire trait for the Spire. I'm pretty sure this is going to be another round for Edwards. This is the only time they've been able to take two in a row, and it's at a good point. You are sitting down 5 1, and last player gets taken down. It's a 3 5. I mean, what would it, I mean, what would you call it if it goes to a round 11 and then a Spire loses it at a 5 1? Oh. I call that a heartbreaking defeat. That would, oh. be, that would be a heartbreaker right there. I mean, especially for Aspire, who had that fire in their in their stomachs and were really having their way with those last two maps. But now, three, three to five, quite literally the cursed round in terms of Call of Duty. Everybody hates to be up five to three. St. Edwards have the opportunity to do the funniest thing ever here to stop this, to stop this reverse sweep at its end. But we, we shall see as Melts does open up into the middle here. Does get caught out. They're chasing them. They smell the blood in the water. But Dante is going to be the one to take out Bala. Vanity trying to help out for his fallen teammate. But 
Melt immediately responded with the positioning of his own. And it looks as though that it's going to be Aspire who are up in the man counter. 4v2. All players are getting taken down. Only one man left. Huh? They know where Eons is. Trying to go for the cruise missile. And it's going to be a reverse sweep to start the day as Aspire win 3-2. You couldn't write it up any better than this, Susano. As Aspire, the disrespect came in through the map three, and they said we are absolutely happy. None of it. The competitive edge swung in their favor, and they complete the reverse sweep to start off the winner's round one of the AWL 8K tournament. And I mean, I'm simply lost for words at this moment. And I mean, the lights came on. St. Edwards were saying, turn those off, turn them off. But it was, uh, it was hard to watch. But I mean, give credit to Aspire. They, they fought back. And what an incredible way to end this first series of the day. Yeah, what a way to start the day off. I mean, goodness gracious, Aspire, after that execution, they pulled the first and they yep. came in with that vengeance that anger that tenacity to keep going and now let's take a look at the live winners bracket brought to you by us here at the Amateur world league but my goodness you look at it right now pulse waiting in that second round just like the final boss the advent one winged angel project above will be going up against chaos purple as they did clear out their rounds 3-0 that would have been a good one to watch. UTA and PNW cleaning up work against SWM. So there you go. Dreaming Demons will now have their, their matchup. And NJNL Demons now going up against Aspire. Coming off of that hot reverse sweep. These are looking like some good matches, Graf. Oh my goodness. With this many teams, 14, you know, coming into Saturday. And we are going to narrow it down to just three and i mean what a way to start it off and i cannot wait to get into the winner round two but everybody don't go anywhere we will have that winner's matchup coming up right after the short